and welcome back. We're going to get into some more advanced tags and probably the most important tag that you'll use other than the ones that we've covered so far are tags that we need to create forms. As you know, when you go to websites, usually there's some sort of a login or registration form. So we're going to build that out today. To get started, let's uh, just create a new file here. We'll save it and call it register.html on our desktop. Perfect. And we know that we want an HTML, so we use our little shortcut and we'll title it register, save that. And now in the index.html file, let's add another link that references register.html and it'll just say here register. All right, we'll save both of these files and let's refresh. We have register, click register. Well, we have nothing yet, but it looks like it's working. Let's uh, add this on our new line just because it looks prettier that way. So to do that, if you remember, we're going to add a break tag. So let's refresh. There you go. We have new page and register. Okay, so let's build out this form. If we go into register.html, the way we write forms in HTML, well, conveniently, there's a form tag. Okay, but this form tag itself, it needs to have the actual form inside of it. So what kind of form elements do we have? Well, again, if we remember our good old friend W3C, let's type in forms. And we can see over here that we have HTML forms. And refresh, uh, we'll make that full screen. And you can see over here that there's a ton of information on it, but you can look that up yourself for now. I'm going to introduce you to the most common ones, probably the ones that you'll use 90% of the time. The first one, as we do with any form, and let's go to that page for now, is, well, we want to enter our name. So how do we do that? We have a input tag that has a type of text because, well, our name will be in text form. And we can close that off. And it's actually a self-closing tag. So now if I save and refresh, okay, we have a little box here. Hopefully you can see that, but well, we should probably title it because we won't know what to enter that way. So we're going to put in here, we're going to say first name, semicolon, and save. Let's refresh. We have first name. And now let's make this a little bit bigger. There you go. Now you can enter your name in here. Awesome. Well, let's, uh, let's add another one for our last name. And again, we'll have our input type. So that's an attribute and a value of text. And if we refresh, we have last name. Okay, but it kind of looks ugly. Remember that HTML just reads line by line and doesn't really know that we want a space here. So again, we can add a break tag here and refresh and we have first name and last name okay that's that's fairly self-explanatory now what else do we have in a form we have email so let's let's add another field which is email and we'll do input again type equals text we'll add another break here because we're going to need that spacing and let's save refresh awesome Okay, so we have our general registration form. And obviously with any form, we need some sort of buttons, right? Like we need to submit this somewhere so we can register. Well, again, there's a nice input type for that. So we do input instead of a text type, there is a submit type. So this, if we add another break in here and I save this, I refresh. It has a submit button now. Now, where did this submit come from? Well, when you put in input type submit, it automatically creates a button. And if you don't specify what to say, it'll just have this text, but we can change that. So we can put value and we'll put register. Save that, refresh. We now have a register button. Okay. Um, but what if we make uh, mistakes in this field? We write stuff and 
Uh, well, we want to reset this form. Again, there's a, another input for that. And the type of that input, as you can imagine, is reset. So now, if we close this, add another break in here. Actually, we can keep that on the same line. We'll save, refresh, and we have reset. So now, if I type in anything in here, and let's say I don't want to, well, I don't like this, I need to reset the form, I can just click reset, and it clears everything for us. Okay, you may be asking yourself, you know, what, what happens when we click register? Before we get into that, I want to just go through all the common input types, and then we'll click register to see what happens. With the email, we ideally want, first of all, for it to be required so that when you click register, if you haven't provided an email, it won't let you register. And there's an attribute that we can use for that, and that is required. And here, we don't actually have to specify a value because automatically it's assumed that required equals to true, which means that this form field is required. So if I save that, I refresh, and I leave it blank and I click register, we'll say, please fill out this field. Now, we also want to make sure that it's a, an appropriate email field. So if I type something like this, we still want to make sure that, you know, this is an incorrect email, we don't want to register. So the input type of text that I told you for email is actually wrong. There's a specific one that we can use, which is, as you can imagine, email. So now, if I refresh and type in something that's not an email, and I click register, I'll say, please include an app in the email address. Very nice. It's kind of like magic. It does this for you, which is very, very nice. Let's expand on our knowledge of inputs and add a few more fields that we'll most likely need. Usually, want to know somebody's birthday. So let's add birthday here. And for this input type, let's do type date. So if I save this and I refresh, look at that. We have a nice little date picker. So I can pick anything in here. All right, what else do we need? We also need gender. So we'll do input type. And for gender, well, there's no specific input type for gender, but there is something called radio. And radio is, as the name suggests, radio buttons. So now I click refresh and, well, I have one radio button, but we ideally want to have options, right? So how do we do that? So for the radio, we also need to say whether it's male or female. Let's have within the gender, we're going to have a break over here in the line. And we'll say input type radio. And we'll say male. And we also want female. And we also want other. And when we refresh this, we have male, female, and other. But you see a problem here. I just click the radio buttons and I can't deselect them. And ideally, you, can only, you should only be able to select one. And right now, the way the radio buttons are, they don't know of each other's existence. We want to make sure that they know that they're connected. They're family and only one of them can be picked. So how do we do that? The way we do that is through the name attribute. So for the name, we'll say, gender. And this name attribute needs to match on all the radio buttons so that they know they are together. They're part of the gender input field. So if I save here and refresh, now you can see that I can only select one. All right, perfect. Uh, what else should we have? Well, let's say I really want to know if you have pets. So with pets, we're going to have input type. Well, you can have multiple pets, so it won't be radio buttons. We want checkbox. So checkbox, we want it to have cats, or let's just put cat. And we want to have can type today. Checkbox. And we want to have dogs. So let's save that, let's refresh, and look at that. We have pets, but this time it's checkboxes, which means I can select multiple. 